Hello everybody, I am back and by popular demand by all the lovely people in the comments of my shorts, thank you by the way, we are taking a look at the Hot Toys Captain Rex as seen in the Clone Wars final season. This is not the Ahsoka one, this is the animated style, but it's semi-realistic based off Sideshow's design. We will talk about that later on. It's been a while guys. It, it has been really nice though seeing everybody in the comments going, when's the next one, when's the next one? I really appreciate it, so thank you. You are why I do this, I enjoy it. But let's get all the emotional stuff out of the way and let's actually talk about figures. Now, as we saw in the last Hot Toys video I did with the Batman, Thank you for all the love, by the way. Uh, my setup sucks for Hot Toys unboxings. So, although I haven't done it now, right after I film this video, I'm gonna buy a bigger light box, cause, um, you know, it's, it's almost like I normally buy Black Series figures and talk about them. But anyway, this box is very nice. It's a very nice box. It's the best box. It's, it's a beautiful thing. The, what you'll see is with all the Hot Toys uh, figures when made by Star Wars, they've all got like a similar design. But for the Clone Wars, they use a blue and yellow, which pops very nicely. There's all your legal info, like don't stick any of this in your mouth or you will die. And if you say this isn't Star Wars or Hot Toys, they will come after you legally. Just for reference, this is the photo on the inside. It's a little slip cover, protective cover with, with a nice little art piece of Rex with his macro binoculars on. Very sick. Um, I don't know if we actually see him ever use that or if it's just in concept art because I know for the Bad Batch Black Series figure he comes with macro binoculars. I think he comes with some others. But off the top of my head, I can't remember him actually using them. I don't mind free stuff. And then he also comes with his little uh, light, which we do see him use. Which is a pretty little piece. I know Justin's collection's always like, why are, isn't this on the front? But not a nice little Easter egg, I suppose. I do have to mention that I did buy this figure well over a year ago now. So there might be extra wear and tear on this figure that wasn't there previously. If we do notice this during the review, either let me know or I'll point it out. I can't remember off the top of my head if I've added any scratches or any of that stuff or broken things. But you know, that's what reviews like this with a camera are here to see because I am legally blind. So details like that I kind of miss. But... We're gonna find out together, and that's the important thing. This is an emotional experience for me, and it is for you. Even though a lot of people over the uh, years of this being out have said there's loads of different things about this figure, like the greeny yellow patina, as you can quite actually clearly see here. People don't really like that. I think he stands out quite nicely. So when you get your cap, oh my god! So when you get your captain of the 501st out of the box, he should look something like this. He doesn't have his ammo pouch on, he doesn't have his guns in. These are all aspects that aren't on the figure. You receive a lovely Tamara Morrison head sculpt with a Rex design, as you can see by the hair. A 330 second helmet, which I do believe is the exact same as the one that came on the deluxe version of the 501st Trooper. But because Rex never actually wears it or doesn't have like an Ahsoka Legion like design to the helmet, he just holds it. Looks pretty decent. He comes with the... Macro binoculars, he comes with the laser slash light that would go on the side of his helmet, which you get an eye tool, like the thing that you use for the movable eyes. He also used the proper your little ears. Comes with two DC-17s, they look stunning. Comes with a DC-15 carbine, which is painted differently to the trooper I'll show later on. He comes with a lot of extra hand options, trigger fingers, pointy fingers, thumbs up. And then he comes with his ammo pouch. Oh, also the, the jetpacks there with two... Uh, flame pieces. I count this as an accessory, not part of his like design because he really rarely wears it, but in comparison to the ammo pouch I'd say that is probably a part of his design, but it's not on him on the figures when he's in the box. I don't know why I'm out of breath, I think I'm just so excited. Or maybe I'm just, I'm just, I'm just really enamored by the head sculpt. No, like genuinely that is an incredible head sculpt. How old's this figure? A couple years old? Also this is a really bizarre point, but I do love the extra expressiveness of his like hands. He's got a thumbs up and then, like, it is a pointing finger, but, like, it's it's double. I don't, I don't know. Like, it's just it just feels a bit more expressive. Because, yeah, he gets the singular, like, finger point, but he also has to... So it's, like, you can give him, like, different emotions just with the hands, which I quite like. But they're kind of, like, getting away with that over time with the clone figures. Uh, they're kind of, like, reducing the number of hands, which is a bit sad, really. And finally, once you've got him out of the box and you've put the magnetic pieces on, like the ammo pouch, and then once you've put on his new hands with the guns, the DC-7, I probably shouldn't call them guns, I should call them blasters, in his hands, which, I'm not gonna lie, if you don't have a heat gun or if you don't have the patience like me, it is an absolute ache to put in, but they are not going anywhere. Those bad boys are stuck in there forever. 
and the sculpts are nice. But yes, this is what he looks like once he's out the box and potentially in your display case, or in your diorama, or in your shoot, whatever your fancy is. The sculpt of this helmet is absolutely stunning. Now, I can't really speak to the accuracy and based off what, like, interpretation of the suit it is because the weld lines go over the blue accents on his helmet which usually is indicative of rebels and bad batch but this came out before then i think that's how that works so like from season three and a bit onwards it was like it didn't go over the the blue lines so i couldn't tell you the accuracy i think this is to do more with the um representation done by hot toys like making it look realistic and obviously the greeny yellow patina that goes through the entire suit to make him look more battle worn that isn't really indicative of the show and some people have issue with the very large ammo pouch i think it's kind of vibey i'm not gonna lie but yeah this is his beautiful details now i could be getting this completely wrong i think he came out before the 501st trooper did he not and then maybe Cody before then. So articulation wise might be similar to the 501st Trooper. I think this was before they fixed the ratchet hips. So he's a little tight, he doesn't move too good. And then also because the armor pieces might be getting in the way, but we'll find out later. Obviously this figure isn't really up to date in terms of release. And we have the Ahsoka version coming out soon, which comes out with phase one and phase two, but it's also in the same style of the live action suits, which I promise you is on pre-order and is coming. So you'll see that, but probably in a year and a half, cause you know, my schedule's terrible. Now, not only being a named character in the Star Wars universe, but also being a fan favorite like Rex, there is so much more extra detail and extra care taken into this figure than you would say like a regular army builder or like a nameless character in the line. So you can see a lot more extra details, but it's also like his articulation kind of fits his moves better, like and fits his stylization better. So obviously we've seen in promo photos and all that fun stuff that he can do the iconic X, crossed arms, gun pose. This is not that, this is a bastardization of that. But it, it gets the point across, you know what I mean? Like in a few seconds, you can make him look like the icon iconic character is because he's put they've put the time into it, they've put the effort into it. It's it's a beautiful boy. He's supposed to be based off the final season look. So he comes with more uh, features that would feature in the final season. As we saw earlier, he comes with his beautiful little jetpack. So as you can see here, he comes with his little jetpack that is really easy to adjust. And it's not like the Boba Fett's or the Django Fett's where it comes with a little clip. It is simply just a magnet, but it's quite a strong magnet. It's sticking on. It's not going anywhere. It's even got the extra weight of the feature there. The feature, good lord. The blast effects, but you know, if you go really ham on the paint, it falls off and all that fun stuff. You know, just just be a bit more careful. It's an expensive figure after all. You want to be treating it nicely. You want to be showing it love. Now, one of the reasons why I would argue that this figure still has not only just a purpose, but a reason to be in your collection is this incredible Tamara Morrison slash Rex head sculpt that I'm pretty sure doesn't come with the Ahsoka Rex and doesn't come with pretty much any other Rex figure I can think of, except for like the Black Series. The detail on this thing is immaculate. Now, it looks really pale um, here. Like it looks overly pale, but it's just because I'm using, you know, white lights and all that rubbish. I'm blowing it out in terms of white. Um, I'm not doing the figure the justice it should be done. So hopefully in the photos later on, that changes that. But no, this is a stunning head sculpt with so many, so many little details and the skin texture is fantastic and the eyes reflect nicely. So they look alive and he looks determined. He looks like he's been through some Umbara a bit too long and he's been there a bit too long and it's just it's getting a bit much just like it was in the final season You know everything was a bit much and then order 66 happens and you know You kind of just lose everything and I feel like this head sculpt conveys losing everything in a war quite well now being commander of the 332nd attack battalion He has to have the helmet as we see in the show He holds it before us so gonna be like Yo, bro, we stand with you. We're literally gonna wear your face on our helmets. It sounds weird, but it looks sick. And I love the contrast between the orange and the blue. And it's just a nice little extra display piece because he doesn't wear it in the show and they don't redesign his helmet in the show for it because obviously he was in Rebel, so they couldn't really have with the orange, even though you could have said he just repainted. But that's not the point. He comes with the helmet and they could have just said, oh, you can use the one that's in the 501st Clone Trooper uh, box, but they didn't, which I really like. Or maybe it came here first. I can't remember. Don't kill me. 
So this isn't canon whatsoever, but the fact that you can like add bits to the helmet, you can take stuff off from the helmet, you know, it just looks fun and it gives you some like display options. So if you've had the figure for a long time and you want to change it up a little, you can just swap some pieces, you can make something of your own and it just changes the figure completely. Because a head sculpt, at least for me, kind of makes or breaks a figure because that's kind of like where you're drawn to first the most, especially with something like this where the orange really pops or there's like a blue stripe in the middle compared to a white background so it's a visually distinctive thing that you stare at first. It gives a nice little pop of colour and in this case it looks like something completely different like if you got rid of the Rex helmet and maybe if you got rid of the, uh, the tally marks it would look like an ARC trooper which you know is fun. Uh, all the parts are interchangeable. What I will note though is when you first start changing the ear pieces with the eye tool when you first do it for the very first time it feels like you're breaking the figure because the paint is going over the top of the ear pieces so they 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 like paint on top of them so it feels like you're cracking and popping paint. It's not fine but be careful and you should be alright and then after a while they just go in and out. Another little thing to note is that the holsters are free floating. Uh, so when you're posing and all that fun stuff, just reposition them. And although these are quite loose, the way the holster is actually designed is once they're in there, it's really hard for them to actually like fall out, basically. Some people would probably like a magnet there just to keep them relatively in place. And maybe maybe for the future editions that might be the case. They might use a magnet on there and then on the pauldron just to keep it all in place a little bit better. But it's just something to keep note of. Just remember to readjust everything as you're going. But as as you might have a clone troop previously, or something to note, you've got to kind of readjust this figure all the time anyway, with different armor pieces. So like, if you don't want to show the black armor up there, you can just move it all about. Stuff like that, just keep, keep yourself on your toes, baby. Now, clones being the thing that got me into Star Wars, and kind of what got me into cinema, sci-fi, and kind of troopers as a whole, the whole idea of it. I'm always happy to have more versions of those characters, and always have more things like that coming out. But it does also raise the question for a lot of collectors, does that make this figure obsolete? Or this figure, arguably, for some people being better than the Assault one, does that make that figure already obsolete? And as we've seen here, there's a few more options that are on the this figure that aren't on the Ahsoka figure that I would argue that make this figure still important for collectors. And then there are features on the Ahsoka figure that make that figure also not so obsolete. So the phase one variants, the the, the fact that it was actually in live action, so it, it'll move differently, it'll be on the uh, live action body mold, which I actually really like, but I know for a lot of reasons, which are fully understandable and justifiable, that a lot of other collectors don't like, so like it looks a bit more baggy. There's a lot more of the black skin bodysuit showing, so like the stunt actors can move, but for a quite literal on-screen version, that's why I love that. So I'm going to be very happy to pick both the 501st Troop from Kenobi up and the Ahsoka Trooper up, but I'm still gonna absolutely keep this guy. I know a lot, a lot of people like to trade up once they get the V2, the V3. But no, I'm keeping this guy because it's such a stunning one piece of clone history. But two, more clones are just better, baby. But let me know down below what you would think. Which one would you pick up or which one are you going to pick up? Because I'm pretty sure this is still on the Sideshow website. I got this over a year ago now on the Sideshow website in one of the daily deals. Beautiful stuff. I am now really awkwardly going to attempt articulation. I never do this right, and I never really get this fully on screen, but we're going to attempt anyway, for you folks at home. Wish me luck. So technically, we're going to start at the top and move down to the bottom, baby. So his rangefinder moves as much as you physically want it to. If you want a receding hairline rangefinder, you can absolutely go for it, mate. The head is on a double ball, I believe. So like it moves at the top, moves at the bottom. So even with a restrictive helmet that is quite big and quite chunky like the Phase 2 slash Phase 1 of Rex, because uh, his is blended, which is a really nice look, you get, honestly, quite a lot of motion, even with the pauldron being in the way. So obviously he'll move a teeny bit more to this side than he will the blue armor pad side. But that's not too bad. So we'll start with the arms now. This will be a bit more restrictive, just because it's literally a massive chunk of plastic in the way. But because of the uh, fabric rib texture bodysuit, this boy can do insane poses slash move a lot more than he should be able to for a figure like this. Because it's not really it's not really restricted, but it's also not a fabric that'll get damaged over time if you leave it in a spot. So as you can see, it goes very far back, very far forward. I'm going to try and speed through this because this is always really awkward for me. Bit above 90. And then wrist. It's That's just standard hot toys. 
But on this figure, they're quietly nicely secured, not like the Batman one, which is falling over the place. Crunch, as you should expect, with a load of plastic in the way. If you fuss with it, you can get a bit of motion, but it's it's not the best, as you should expect. But you get a lot of twist. A lot forward, if you move the armor out of the way, you can get a bit further. A bit back. Knees. I'm not gonna lie boys, seeing a move like that got me pretty steamy. I think it's time to cool down a little bit. Yeah, baby. It is so warm in here right now. <laughs> now here is a comparison between the Hot Toys Captain Rex, the original release of the Black Series Captain Rex, and the Bad Batch take on Captain Rex. Now obviously you're not really gonna display them like this, but most collectors, I would argue, probably have either one of the other Black Series Captain Rex if they're watching a Captain Rex video. Or, if you like the Hot Toys version, here he is with the Deluxe 501st Trooper from Hot Toys. This is not the Kenobi one, this is just the standard one that was seen in Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith. But as you can see, the, the white decoloration of Rex stands out a lot more against the regular 501st Trooper. Which for me, I can perfectly justify more because he'll have been in more battles, he'll have seen more rubbish than a, a standard 501st Trooper. But I know for a lot of people, they'll want them to blend in more. So like, you can see a very large difference between the two. So we can see here from the DC-15 Carbine that it is a lot more plain on the 501st Trooper. Tell you what, I'll get out Rex's. It's a very minute detail, but there's more airbrushing on Rex's DC-15 than there is on the 501st Trooper. So there's more details put into Rex's blaster, which once this game makes him stand apart, but also if you're not a fan of that, and you know Rex doesn't really use that blaster too much, you can give it to the 501st Trooper. So for some photography, that's what I've been doing. And then uh, before this review, I accidentally swapped it, so I need to go in the boxes and swap them out. So yeah, you can see there, there's a lot more accents. It's got like the chalkier design that was seen in the Clone Wars. Well, that's the way that Justin's collection puts it. Compared to that, that looks a bit more plain, whereas that looks a bit more like, like a hero prop, I suppose, whereas that looks more like a stunt prop, which to be honest, that kind of matches the vibe uh, in terms of Rex compared to a 501st. So this is gonna be a little bit weird of this section. Uh, I kind of want to talk a little bit real for a, uh, a second. This year has been wild for this channel. I haven't really posted much, but you guys have absolutely, you know, been there and very, been very supportive and very vocal in really positive ways. And this channel has blown up quite a lot from what it was. To put in reference, I didn't even have a hundred uh, people looking at this channel uh, at the beginning of this year, which is wild. And like I said, I don't, I, I've been posting on shorts. Uh, that's kind of what I usually do because that's how I, I do my photography. I do it in like a short style and everybody's been really vocal, really nice, really friendly. And it's nice to build a community of people who, who like similar things, but also have different opinions on those things so we can have conversations. So a lot of people have had different opinions on the Rex figure over the few months. And it's been really nice to talk about that, like, the, like what I was saying, the ammo box, all that stuff. It's been nice talking to people who have same interests in the hobby, but for different reasons and have different opinions on the hobby, but in a positive manner that isn't just us hating on each other. Because it's not that deep, boys. We just we just like figures, innit? We just, we just like toys. And it's just a fun time. And you guys have made this way more fun than it used to be because collecting can be kind of like an isolating topic you just do it by yourself you just buy a few things whereas i wanted to talk about it a bit more i wanted to like show my love show my appreciation of these things and you guys have really started to really pick up on that and do the same it's quite nice and i'm not i'm not an emotional dude uh but but it's been a nice vibe <laughs> i'll put it that way so thank you for the comments uh thank you for being here let me know what you think of the figures let me know what you'd like to see more in four months time when i can bring my mental stability well enough far through to do a video but yeah, much love guys. Uh, I don't know what's gonna be coming next. I don't know if I'm gonna do some of my backlog figures of Hot Toys, cause I've got quite a few to get through, or if I don't know if next is gonna be the 501st Trooper, or another spin-off like the Yellow Suit Daredevil. He's coming. So let me know what you'd like to see. I'm gonna be perfectly bloody honest. I kind of forgot a full segment I was supposed to do, which is photography. That's almost like the cornerstone of this channel. I completely forgot to do it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stop seeing these white figures in a white box. And we're going to look at it in a fancy, glorious manner that would make the 501st proud. And while you watch this, give me a like. I, 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 I need validate. No, I'm kidding. Uh, if you like it, like it. But we're going to look at some beautiful photos now. Much love.
Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes. Was that weird? Yes.